Center. I am Matt Smith, joined tonight by TJ McBride here for Mile High Sports. Thank you very much for tuning in. Well, TJ, it was a big night for the Nuggets as they started off 2018-2-0, taking down Utah 99-91. That's two wins over the Jazz in the last few weeks. And more importantly, the Nuggets have won five out of their last seven. They advanced to 21-17 and overall, and they're streaking. That's two they're in a row streaking. for Denver, and tonight big performances from both Jamal Murray and Trey Lyles and Trey Lyles had a career high 26 points. Yeah, I mean you talk about the, the Canadian contingent. You get 52 of your 99 points tonight from your two Canadians. Also two Kentucky Wildcats as well. It was incredible seeing what that spacing brings to the floor when you have a guy like Trey Lyles who can play the five or the four, stretch the floor all the way out of that three-point line and open up the paint for guys like Gary Harris, for guys like Jamal Murray to streak into and have just a complete open running lane at guys like Derek Favors who aren't necessarily most fleet of foot. They were fantastic start to finish tonight and they had a couple struggles in that second quarter, but second that third quarter started, they came out and put their foot on the throat and ended this game very quickly. Like he alluded to, slow start here for Denver tonight. They would trail 49 to 46 at the end of the first half, and pretty much I, th I think the only thing that really went right for Denver in that first half was Trey Lyles, who yeah. was outstanding. In the, f in the first three minutes and 45 seconds of the second quarter, he had 12 points. He had 12 and 5 to finish that first half, and what we're seeing tonight, uh, what we're seeing continually, rather, from Trey Lyles on a night-to-night -night basis, providing that instant offense off the bench for this Denver team has been enormous in this yeah. team's growth the last month and, and a half. And not only that, he's playing when he's playing small ball five, he's not getting bullied. He had 11 rebounds, I believe, again tonight. He is doing a lot of great things down low. He looked good defensively. He came to play against his former team tonight, a team that he had a little bit of a personal vendetta against. He wouldn't go and say it in the locker room. He said this was just another game for him. He was just trying to approach just another one of the games that he came to. But at the same time, you could tell there's a little extra with this game. Game. Absolutely. Whenever you play against your old team, you want to put it on them. And Trey Lyles was yeah. able to be successful in that venture. <laughs> it's a very nice way of putting what he did tonight to this Utah Jazz team. He was su successful in that venture tonight. The Nuggets turned things around in a very similar fashion to what we saw the other night against the Suns. It was a huge third quarter spurt. And the Nuggets, like I said, trailed it by three at halftime, but they were out-rebounded by nine in the first half and shot just 33% from downtown, which is, uh, you, you can attest to, it yeah. is a rare thing for the Nuggets yes, to do is. that. But boy, did they bounce back in that third quarter. The Nuggets going scorched earth themselves. 71% from the three-point line in the third quarter, 60% from the field. And altogether, they outscore Utah 38-16 to and turn what was a three-point deficit at halftime into a 19-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. And that was the story of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they only scored 23 points in each the first and the second quarter, and then they outscore the Jazz by 22 in the third. Like, that alone is incredible. Incredible. They just came out here and decided this game was over. This is a Nuggets team that last year probably loses both of these last two games. But they come out here knowing that they're better. They handle business in the third quarter like great teams do. And they annihilated the Suns from the third and fourth quarter and just ended this game the way that they wanted to. It's assertive. The way that they wanted to maybe, but not the way Coach Malone wanted to. <laughs> they get outscored 26-15 yes. to 15 in the fourth quarter. They shoot just 26% in the fourth quarter. There kind of took their threes at the end there. Th that, that were, were that, ske time, that, would, that yeah. skewed that even better. So the Nuggets took their foot off the gas a little bit, which was a theme we had seen earlier this year mm -hmm. from this team. But lately, they've been doing a better job closing these teams out. Tonight, they didn't. Either way, they get the 99-91 to 91 win over the Jazz. And one thing that I have have to point out Denver 11 and 2 this season yes. when holding their opponent under 100 points and I think the more interesting number TJ 4 and 6 when scoring under 100 themselves that yeah. number I haven't checked it from last year but that had to be way worse they had one win last year but it's there you go points. they're already 4 one. and 6 under 100 points impressive stuff from the Nuggets as they continue that, to get better yeah and then the, Malone hit it over and over again the first two losses to Utah were because of turnovers they come out tonight 10 turnovers only 
only give up 13 points. Like, that is how you win. You play good defense, you don't give away free possessions, you hit your open jump shots, and you rely on your scoring to walk through this. They had their spacing, they had their outside shooting going, they had their defense that was great in that second half, and they annihilated this team. They really did. That nine point game, or the eight point win that they really had, does not justify how well Agreed. this team played in the third and fourth quarter. Absolutely. And the other thing that I really like tonight is when you have a young team with young core, you have to find different ways to win games. Yes. Now, the Nuggets are one of the best rebounding teams in the league, but tonight they got dominated on the glass yeah. by 17. However, they come out with what was a pretty dominant victory. So, if you're looking for bright spots and areas in growth, it's the fact that you can win a game like this in such dominant fashion, but get mopped up on the glass, which, like we said, does not happen often. It really doesn't. And another thing that was really surprising to me is that they forced, I believe, 17 turnovers yep. tonight. That was something they could not do last year. They were not turning teams over and getting out in transition. First, second, third, and fourth quarter, they were able to gobble up steals and get this pace going up and higher and higher. And that's what allowed Nikola Jokic to finally start getting going late in the game. You see Gary Harris streaking down the court. The team finally started rallying around that pace, and that's what allowed them to score up to that 99 point mark. Definitely. They had 19 points off of Utah turnovers, and when you, can, when you can do that, you can take care of the basketball like they did, just 10 turnovers, and you're making shots on the whole. Usually you rebound better than they yes. did tonight, but basketball is a pretty simple game, and the Nuggets seem to be taking the steps in the right direction. Now, the other thing to bring up, and we talked about it the other night after the win against Phoenix, is the rotations. Yes. Coach Malone had talked about wanting to expand the rotation, get some more rest for some of those guys that they leaned on heavily minutes-wise in the month of December, and we saw that again tonight and it was early that coach Malone brought I think it was Tory Craig Trey Lyles off the bench and uh, and then Will Barton and Will Barton Beasley. yeah that was the one I was missing. Malik Beasley is the guy that really surprised me tonight because he's not super polished yet he's extremely young he's not going to be extremely polished at this point but the dude for how athletic he is has one of the most insane motors I've seen in the guy his size guards don't play like that guards don't go all out at every single second when they have that kind of responsibility on their shoulders he was great defensively he was out in transition he was getting big dunks he was he had an assist tonight. Malik Beasley gave them great minutes in the time he's on the court. Yeah, and we talked about those big minutes from the bench, guys. Will Barton, 33 minutes tonight. Trey Lyles, of course, that career high, 26 in 28 minutes tonight. And next up for the Nuggets, they now have two on the road. They have yes. three of their next five on the road, which really represents a very big part of the schedule in the month of January. With so many games at home, you've got to take care of business. They did that again tonight. Yes, they did. But you have to find a way to win some of these games on the road. And the game tomorrow night in Sacramento would seemingly be their best chance to do it in the next week that, or so. That, that's the trap game as well, though, because you have Golden State directly after, after you get two home wins to start the 2018 exactly. year out. Yep. So that's going to be a very scary w a game for them. If they can come out and blow the doors off Sacramento in a game that should be a trap game and then go to Golden State with that kind of momentum again, they always play Golden State well. I was watching the Warriors broadcast last time they played in Oakland, and they were saying that, that for some reason they can not hit threes whenever the Denver Nuggets are in Oracle Arena, and that's just something that continually happens. So you roll in with a, be a three-game winning streak after Sacramento, and you get the Warriors, who already don't play well against you in Oracle, it's a recipe for, for success. Three-game winning streak after Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Looks like somebody's overlooking the Kings. Let's see if the Nuggets <laughs> are tomorrow night in Sacramento, as they will have to go to Golden State, which is now a stretch, I think it's 17 days, where you play two games in Oracle. That is, the, the, the schedule makers of the NBA, no friends to the Denver Nuggets, Never. certainly in these last few months. I am Matt Smith, and this is TJ McBride. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you stay locked into MileHighSports.com for all of our exclusive Nuggets coverage, and follow along on Twitter. I'm Real Matt Smith. That's Matt with one T, and this is TJ, at TJ McBride yep. NBA, and of course, at Mile High Sports for all your Colorado sports news. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.